Have you ever made a decision that seemed perfect at the moment, but later on turned out to be a huge mistake? In this video, I talk about selling my first Amazon KDP business for $100,000. I'll share all the behind the scenes details of the sale, what I had expected and why I ultimately ended up regretting my decision to sell. Before we get too far into this video, I just wanna say that if you have a small Amazon KDP account, it doesn't even have to be very successful, you might actually be sitting on a piece of real estate worth 50, 100, 250, maybe even half a million dollars. So we're gonna hop over to empireflippers.com. This is one of, if not the largest online brokerages for selling businesses. And this is also where my first business ended because I ended up selling through their brokerage. Okay, so you see here, we're at empireflippers.com and just a little bit of information about them if you haven't heard about them before. You can see that they sold $372 million worth of different businesses. This can be FBA, could be print, could be KDP, some other e-com or like SaaS style business. They basically do everything as far as I'm aware. So the reason I sold my first Amazon KDP business with Empire Flippers is the fact that they have a bunch of buyers already and they can maximize the profit that you're gonna get out of your business. And the reason that they do this is because they get a cut of about 15% commission on the total price. So if your business could be sold for $100,000, but maybe they could get 200 for it, they're gonna push for the 200 because they wanna make that extra commission. They wanna make as much as possible. So they're really on your team. So believe it or not, actually, I got started with Amazon KDP because I was watching one of the original Empire Flippers podcasts. I don't even know if they do them anymore. But at that time, they had mentioned one of the co-hosts that, oh, he was uploading books on Amazon KDP. And he explained a bit about it. And I thought, hey, this is something that I could do as well. Okay, so we'll jump over to the marketplace here. This is ultimately where your listing will end up after it's gone through the process and all the vetting and stuff. And you put together your P&L and they've, you know, finalized the price. So we put in KDP here. And you can see there's a bunch of different books on here. To be honest, there is quite a bit less than there used to be. And I think it's because Empire Flippers is a bit pickier than they used to be. You can see the prices here, 293,438, 182. And another thing you'll notice here, which I'll talk more about, is the monthly multiple. So what determines the actual listing price is the profit of your business, not the revenue, the actual profit times how many months. And this tends to vary. And it's also where I ran into trouble with my listing. So you see 37 times here, this isn't too bad. And a big part of this is the business is established. I'd imagine, you know, it's been put together pretty good and it's been around since 2019. So buyers like to see the stability of things. Again, 38, 22 is really low. So this tells me that this business maybe isn't great or the buyer just really wants to cash out and they want the money for something else because that's quite low. Sometimes if your business isn't that desirable, it can be on the marketplace for a while. That wasn't really the case for me or any of the people I know of who have sold. So if you wanna know what your Amazon KDP business is worth or any online business for that matter, go down to my description below and click on the calculator and you can fill out the information and they'll give you an evaluation and they'll say different ranges. If you're in a rush to sell, this is what we would list for. We're gonna get the best response from buyers. And then if you're not in a rush, you might list it on the high side and wait to get someone who's gonna pay you top dollar. Ideally, you're not doing much on your business when you go to sell it. You wanna try and make things as automated as possible. And then here, we're in the two to three year range would probably be ideal. Say 2020, fine. Gross revenue. 5,000 and then we'll say the profit is 4,000. Products do you have? Uh, we'll say we have 15 books. All right, 156,800. This is the recommended selling rate. So this puts us at 39.2 and this would be considered high and absolute high so basically if you want to get the most people interested and have the best odds of selling it around this area you probably want to stay in the recommended range but you could absolutely if you have a great business you could hold out for something higher you can see it goes from 109 all the way to 203 and you know this is just something you would negotiate 
with the buyer. So now that you understand a little bit about the multiples, I'm gonna to talk to you about where things went wrong for me and why I regret when I sold my business. So we're gonna jump into the back end of my dashboard. Okay, so you'll see I've had to blur out this URL just because I no longer own the website. Honestly, even if I did own it, I probably wouldn't wanna show it because I'd have a bunch of people copying my books. So this is back from back in 2020. And you can see all the different steps here. Basically the process is that you will list your website. They're gonna go through the different steps. You're gonna create a PL, profit and loss sheet, and they can help you with that. And we're gonna come to terms on final evaluation and then the listing's gonna go live. Then you're gonna end up speaking with different people who are interested in buying the business. So to click on the profit and loss, go to summary. Obviously all this stuff I have to blur out just because this is no longer my business, but you can see here, they're accounting for all the different sources of income. KDP, Ken Unlimited, you know, all-star bonuses, if there is any, Ingram Spark, Draft to Digital, Authors Republic, deducted from your revenue in order to determine what the profit is. Ghostwriting company, a lot of times things like ghostwriting or covers, these are one-time expenses, so they may be deducted from the actual evaluation. So they won't bring down the total evaluation, but they'll be listed in the P&L for potential buyers to look at. Don't be too intimidated by this because honestly, I didn't even have a P&L when I listed my website. Someone at Empire Flippers helped me put it together. I was not tracking things this closely. Obviously you can do it yourself and I encourage you to do that, but they can absolutely hold your hand through the process because you're gonna be paying them a 15% commission if they do sell your business. So. You might as well put them to work. We can see the purchase details. So you can see it was sold for $100,000, $100,000 up front, 15% commission. So you can see that I'd pay them $15,000. Okay, so you can see the listing here. It was listed for $127,686. Monthly revenue, 7,358. And then the actual net profit is 4,936. This is where things went really wrong for me. You can see it was listed at 26 times and it sold, we negotiated and came to $100,000. So you'll notice some discrepancy here from what they recommend today and the high end versus what mine was listed for. So I sold my business in the low 20 multiples because this was a standard range. And at the time to get $100,000 and you know, in USD and I was Canadian as well. So it was like 140 at the time. It was a lot of money. To me, I thought it was a great deal, but I didn't realize that the online business market was gonna transform dramatically in the next three to four months. So what happened is that these multiples went from in the range of 20 to 30 maybe tops all the way from 35 to 45 and in some cases even higher than that so the person who purchased my business it was automatically worth double what he paid so he essentially got it for free he hadn't even put any work into the business yet if i had waited three or four months to list i could have made two maybe two and a half times the money that i made selling and this is why i really regret the timing of the sale but amazing for the buyer and i am happy for him and he's a great guy so at least i can feel good about that but it would have been nice to make at least an extra 100 grand i actually did an interview about this sale right after it happened when i was in hawaii and i did that with the mickelson twins of publishing.com so i'll throw something up and you can go check that out if you want to hear more about it question that I get all the time is if you're making four or $5,000 a month passively, why would you sell your business? And I mean, the truth is I didn't have a lot of money at the time. I was backpacking around. I was in, you know, Asia. I spent a lot of time doing the digital nomad thing and to get hundred thousand dollars for a business of mine that I wasn't really proud of how I built it kind of thrown together in some ways, but to be able to start fresh with a new business and to have that money in my bank, and give me a lot of security so I could continue to travel. It was just the right thing for me to do at that time. And to this day, I'm very happy with it, which is bad market timing on my part. So if you're thinking of selling and you wanna maximize the amount you get for your business and you don't wanna do what I did and sold it for half as much and didn't know that the market was gonna change dramatically, there's a few things that you can do. 
The first one is you want to contact Empire Flippers way beforehand. So like three to six months beforehand, talk to one of their reps and start planning things out. Get your P&L sorted out, figure out, you know, should you be investing any more money into the business? How can you automate things? Can you create SOPs that are basically instructions for the new owner to be able to take over the business really well? The less work there is for them and the more automated it is, the older the business is, the more likely you are to sell and to get the best price. So instead of just jumping into this, you want to have a good game plan. So when everything goes live, you know that you're in the best possible position. An example of what you wouldn't want to do is let's say that you're planning on selling your business in January or February. Are you going to release 10 more books that you know, you have to get a bunch of reviews for, and you have to put a lot of money into ads, maybe even losing money with advertising, trying to figure out what converts, or are you just gonna kind of clean things up and maximize the amount of profit that you can get out of your business? Probably the latter. One thing I'll say is don't be intimidated by this process and make it seem like it's a big deal to sell your business, because it's really not. These people basically hold your hand through the whole thing. When people are interested, they'll book a call with you based on when you're available and you'll hop on the phone with them and an empire representative and they'll kind of talk you through it and they'll be on the phone and all they're going to do is ask you different questions that are you know just regular common sense things that you would know about your business you just answer the questions and if they say hey we're thinking about this much money would you accept that go you know thank you so much for the offer i will talk to empire flippers and i'll get back to you you wanna come off as someone that is willing to work with them on the price. Another big question that I've gotten a lot is, okay, I've sold my business, now what should I do with the money? And first off, as a disclaimer, this is not financial advice, but you do have a lot of options. So the first thing that comes to mind to me is, you could put your money in something like the S&P 500. Historically, this is gonna return pretty good results, and it is very hands-free. And in most cases, depending on where you're from, your investment income tends to be taxed on the lower end. But again, not financial advice. So we can see here, we let things compound without adding in any other money for 10 years. That's the 200,000 at 8%. We're gonna end up at 431,785. You can see a breakdown here. So you can put the money away and you can invest it simply and just let it compound over time. And then by the time you're ready to retire, this will probably be all the money that you need. So let's say you got 8%, like I know treasury bonds and like GICs and stuff are pretty high right now, maybe not quite this high, but maybe you could get $16,000 per year, just in interest. So you'd be making, you know, well over $1,000 a month just sitting on the money. And this is a very safe option that you could go down. The other thing you could do is you could go back to Empire Flippers and look at other businesses that you potentially might wanna purchase. Maybe this one here, you see a net profit of $5,000 and they're trying to just get rid of it for $98,000. You know right away that 18 times multiple is pretty low. Maybe there's some work that we can do on this business here. We're gonna be able to list it later on at the higher rate. It's hard to know why this is listed at a lower rate rate, but I would be willing to guess that they've maybe had some account troubles or net profit is starting to drop off a bit. Although that is pretty normal in the summer months anyways. But this could be an opportunity right here for you to go, say you got 200,000, go use financing if you don't want to use your own money or put, you know, give these people an offer at say like $80,000, you could buy it, fix it up, and then come back to the market in maybe a year and sell it at 35 times. The truth is people who buy businesses correctly make their money when they purchase. So one of two things happens. Either you and I know that this business is worth 30 or 35 times X and we buy it at 18. We know we've already doubled our money just at the purchase. So that's the best way to do things, to make money on the purchase. The secondary thing is if there is a bunch of holes in the business, like maybe you obviously don't know what they're doing with ads or maybe they don't have any books on audio yet and you know that you're able to come in, take the existing business and grow it quite quickly just because there's a gap of knowledge between you know what the seller knows and what you know. And then for me, the third option would be to take what I learned with my last business 
and implement it into creating a new business. So just because you sold your business doesn't mean that you can't publish on Amazon KDP. What it does mean is that you can't go right into the market that you just sold your business on. So if it was in the spirituality niche, you're not going to be able to publish in there or at least not for several years, which is completely fair because you don't want to come in as an expert on that market and start dealing royalties from the person that you just sold the business to. This is in a disclaimer that you'll need to sign. You can use your newfound knowledge come to come into a new market and create a new business, which by all means should outperform your original business because you're better at your craft now. All right, so that's it for this video. If you are interested in finding out what your business is worth, use the evaluation tool down in the description and connect with someone at Empire Flippers and start planning out how you're gonna sell your business and when you're gonna sell it. As always, if you have any questions I didn't cover in the video, drop a comment below and I will get right back to you. And if you have enjoyed this video and you wanna support the channel, consider liking or subscribing to this video. That helps me tremendously. All right, thanks guys.